Hey guys, so this isn't really um, part of the Met permaculture. This is just my, my house and my little local area. Um, but I want to show you guys what I've been working on. Maybe it'll give some of y'all uh, some of your own ideas. Um, this is an apricot tree that I planted, uh, that I planted uh, last fall. It was uh, very uh, feeble. It was, the wind would blow and it would bend over at like a 90 degree angle. And uh, I just kind of let some of the uh, kitchen drain run off on it over the winter. And you can see a bunch of other stuff has sprung up around it. I'm not going to be getting rid of this stuff because I think it's, it's probably going to be uh, good as a kind of a green mulch for the next uh, next few months. We're kind of into the dry season here after Pesach and uh, in a month or so. And um, so... I want this stuff to uh, cast shade on the ground and not let it dry out around the tree. Um, maybe I'll stomp it down in a few months. But you can see uh, the buds are uh, uh, opening up here. We got flowers. Uh, we got um, we got all kinds of little leaves, and so I'm hoping to get some real good growth out of it this uh, this growing season until next winter. Um, I'm hoping it'll maybe it's ambitious, but I'm hoping it'll get as high as the roof here. Here I made some uh, planter beds. Well, I mean, here's one planter bed. I made some other ones around the uh, the area that I'm not going to show yet because they're not done. But this one is about done. Um, I put in a uh, robinia, a black locust that I grew from seed last year. Here he is, uh, and that's going to be doing nitrogen enrichment here. I need to run irrigation here within the next week because, as I said, we're coming to the dry season. You can see. Uh, the way it works is you have like with robinia you have um, two thorns and then between them you have uh, a branch so here you can see between uh, every pair of thorns it's about to uh, start opening up and starting to split and that's where the uh, leaves are going to come out. Let's, uh, let's uh, take a little walk around here. Um, so small planter bed. I'm probably going to put some kind of vegetable thing in here, maybe a pumpkin or something, I don't know. But this is, this right here is a um, pomegranate that I grew from a cutting last year. And you can see uh, the leaves are starting to come out. I just cut off a branch and grew it in water until the um, roots came out and then uh, uh, planted it in soil. And then uh, last fall the leaves came off. I wasn't sure if it would make it, but it made it. This is some sort of lemon lime type thing that I bought. It's not liking life here so far. It was a hard winter with lots of cold wind blasting right in right in its uh, face. Um, so you can see it, it looks very sad. Uh, hopefully over the next couple of months as it gets hotter and you know I irrigate it and so on and so forth it'll uh, it'll come back to life. But if not you know I think I got it as a present. If not it cost me something like uh, 15 bucks, so it's not a huge loss. I'll put something else in the spot. This is uh, prime real estate. Um, you can see on the right here, it's all uh, thorns and rocks and stuff. And on the left here is, well, it used to be the same, but I uh, cleaned it out. Here, made some semi steps in here. This is another Robinia. It's, um, you can see leaves are starting to come out on this guy. He's uh, he survived the winter. I grew him from seed last year, and um, so I'm hoping to, I'm hoping that you know he'll get to be a meter taller. So this growing season, I made a uh, plant for bed here. I thought I was going to make a greenhouse. This is, in retrospect, real flimsy construction. Um, you know, use a metal frame if you can, or something more solid than this. These guys are anchored with rebar, but that's not enough. Uh, with the weight of the plastic on it, especially with the crazy winds that we have from blasting through here, that'll uh, that'll collapse it. Um, but maybe I'll run. Right now, it's uh, it's being used kind of my uh, uh, organic waste repository. I'll fill it in with some soil and then uh, plant some vegetables in there. And probably what I'll do is I'll hang some kind of uh, fogger hose off this uh, top bar here. Let's see, this is my neighbor's, uh, these are my neighbor's locust trees, carob, bean, uh, carob trees here. I just kind of delineated the uh, property line with him. 
I did some, I guess you'd call it landscaping here. Basically what I did was I got rid of, rid of all the, uh, this is our main water line for the settlement. Um, you can see running down that way, I got rid of all the, uh, all the uh, thorns, which took some uh, work with uh, a pair of welder's gloves and a handsaw. And uh, basically rebuilt some of the, they're not real terraces, the slope here is uh, pretty gentle, so I can get away with this kind of thing. Um, but they're just here to catch the water flow and uh, slow it down as the rain runs off this uh, hillside um, and let it soak into the ground. So up top here, I haven't really done any work. You can see what the state of this place was before I got my hands on it because it was all like this. Here I planted another robinia that I grew from a cutting, or excuse me, that I grew from a seed last year. And you can see this guy is already woken up. You know, all his little uh, leaves are coming down here and he's about to start growing like a maniac, I believe. I'm going to run the irrigation line here uh, soon. I just got my basic gray water irrigation system set up. This here, you can see it in all this greenery, is another um, another pomegranate that I grew from a cutting. You can sort of see a stump in there, right in here. Um, and he is awake and it's, I guess, time for him to grow. He's putting out a lot of leaves. Um, right here, this little guy is an oak tree that was completely covered up by various thorns but I uh, cut them all down and now he's got some uh, breathing room for himself. I've also seeded some uh, pumpkin in these uh, in these patches and some black locust and I guess we'll see over the next several months what comes up. I might have to just uh, grow uh, my own seedlings. Y'all can see uh, there's a giant rock pile there that I've been splitting those boulders with uh, hand tools and uh, making making planter beds out of uh, out of the smaller rocks. You can see some of the planter beds on the left in varying states of progress. I'll show you guys in a minute. Here's an apple seedling that I put in last year. Um, he just woke up from the from the winter sleep from dormancy. I uh, put him in. He was exactly the same size. Um, and it was it was right around winter break so now i'm hoping uh he's going to be growing fast my son asked me for an apple tree so now he's very particular about it this this is his you can see those uh, terraces this is the view from the bottom i didn't really have to do a whole lot uh move rocks over a little bit um because this whole hillside was inhabited by people that were doing this thousands of years ago um back to the first temple times and I guess beyond the uh, seven uh, nations we're living here and this is really really nice soil you can you can see like how dark that is right there um, usually we have redder soils but these are really nice uh, really uh, nutrient rich so you know uh, these terraces were already more or less in place it was just a matter of uh, doing cleanup you can see some of these rocks, how square that one is. So there was something here and uh, you can see, you can find rocks like this all over the place. So it was big enough that they were cutting rocks square, you know, for ashlars, I guess. And it was old enough that um, no, no structures remain. So go figure. I don't think anybody went through the work of destroying all that stuff by hand. Um, so think about how much time it takes for a building that's built out of something this big, this solid, to completely collapse to the point where you can uh, maybe see there was a building there, but that's it. This is my first draft of my gray water irrigation system. You can see the kitchen drain runs off here. Um, overall, it's got a downward slope. This section runs up a little bit. I got some uh, sand here in this bucket that I put in. Uh, and on the bottom there's some uh, geo fabric keeping the sand from falling out and letting the water run through acting as a filter then down here I've got a uh, $30 pump Chinese pump I got from eBay um, with a filter on the back end and uh, right now I'm just running it off the vehicle battery 
it runs down to the uh, planter beds and the oak tree uh, pretty soon I'll have a solar panel and uh, dedicated 12 volt battery um, you can see some of the stuff that I've been growing here from seedlings you can also see some of these crazy weeds that are coming up here um, and uh, these are the planter beds in various states of completion so pretty soon this thing will be um, I mean it's completely uh, it's completely filled from with a gray water runner from our house and pretty soon it'll be uh, solar powered and so we should not have any extra costs for irrigating this whole uh, this whole uh, area this whole uh, lot um, this thing is relatively powerful it puts out something like uh, from 80 to 130 psi it's uh, relatively low flow for gal uh, one gallon a minute which is fine I'm not really in a hurry to go anywhere um, so this means it can lift water as high as the highest point of our uh, lot here so we can irrigate everything with it and uh, we're using something like uh, 18 cubic meters a uh, a month if we're uh, recovering half of that you know nine cubic meters of water um, that's that's plenty you know trees even fruit trees generally need you know in the heat of the summer in the height of the grown season need something like um, I don't know 30 30 liters a week 50 liters a week so that means you know uh, 120 uh, 120 uh, liters a month um, I mean that's that's uh, that's fine you know the amount of trees are going to be grown here especially considering most of them are not going to be fruit and a lot of them are going to be dry land adapted uh, that that means that we shouldn't have to spend any money on on water